Hello everybody, Andrea Trouski here with Dental L Tutoring. So last night we had a tutoring session for about an hour. And if you've been thinking about becoming a, um, a Dental L member, now is a good time to start because I have been adding tons of things because now I do this full time. So I've been tutoring for about 13 years, but I was a dental assistant um, full time and then I became a dental hygienist full time and then I was a restorative hygienist, I guess part time. But now I'm only working at the dental office twice a week which is good because I can still offer that real world experience. But for the most part though, I tutor. So I am here to help. And now I do um, tutoring live sessions every single Sunday. And if you're not, if you're not able to attend um, a session, that is okay because I do save all of them. So you can watch them anytime. Um, but let me just show you guys the one that I did yesterday. So this was not too long ago. I'm just going to share my screen here. So um, at, at um, every single um, tutoring um, session, we work on case studies because everybody loves case studies. And we all know how hard they are to kind of get used to. And if you're studying for the board exam, these are the types of things that you have to know. So um, it would be the case studies, right? So let me just show you guys a few examples. So this session took about actually an hour and 14 minutes. So it was a little bit longer, but everybody loves them because it's case study. So um, just as an example, let me, let me kind of go through a couple questions here. So let's do this one. So you are assisting the dentist in another deep um, preparation. The cavity is large and needs to be cleaned out. The patient's been told he may need a root canal at some point. What can be placed if the pulp is slightly exposed? Is it calcium hydroxide? Is it glass ionomer? Is it composite or is it amalgam? Now this is a perfect example of having too much information, but that is what the board exam likes to do. They just put in there as much info as they can, but there's only some key points in here that you need to pay attention to. So if this looks confusing to you, try to keep it simple. So the main things that you, you have to make sure to focus on is what is the question asking? So typically look at the last part is what can be placed if the pulp is slightly exposed? That's the question, that's it, and that's the answer that you have to think of. So all of this other stuff that I had said or um, that I have here in the question is part of the question, but do you have to know all of that? No. The main thing that you have to know is the actual question portion, is what can be placed if the pulp is slightly exposed. So the part where I said um, that you are assisting the dentist in another deep um, preparation, yes, that's a good thing to know, but do you have to know that? No. And then I said that the cavity is large and needs to be cleaned out. Well, if you're assisting in a prep, that typically means there's a cavity. And if it's a deep one, then it's larger. So all of this info, you don't really have to pay attention to. And then the next part, that the patient's been told he may need a root canal at some point. Does that really involve the question? Not really. It's good to know, I suppose, as like kind of a a background information, but it's not really that critical. So anyways, you guys, so that was just kind of a longer explanation on it. But so what can be placed if the pulp is slightly exposed? Which one do you think? So the answer is um, calcium hydroxide, also referred to as um, DICAL. So that is the company name. On the board exam, they could use either or. So you do need to know each of them. So yes, this can be placed if the pulp is slightly exposed. If all of it's exposed, you obviously need to do something else, right? You can't just simply put on a liner and then, a, um, and then probably a base and then a filling. You kind of need um, um, more than that first, so such as a root canal. So does that make sense? So let's go through one more question and see how you guys do here. So you are instructed to take impressions for a patient who needs a night guard. What types of impressions will you take? So will you take alginates with a bite registration? Will you take alginates without? Will you take stone models with or plaster models without? So again, you have to know, okay, if I'm taking a night guard, what do I need to do? So think outside the box. What would you be setting up for? What types of things do you need? Um, and this is perfect for the dental assistants out there, for the dental hygienists out there. 
These are the types of things that you do have to know, especially when you start to work in the real world, because they may not train you. They may lightly train you, but then they just assume that you know this. So yes, so the answer is A. So anytime you are taking impressions for a night guard, you need the alginates, of course, and also the bite registration. So you need to know how the patient closes down. If the lab does not have that information, they cannot make the night guard. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of case studies and they're complicated. Some are easier, some are complicated. So if you would like to become a part of this, um, I do the case studies here. I'll stop sharing my screen for a second, but I do the case studies now every single um, Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and there's a new topic every single Sunday. So you guys will have tons of case studies. So by the end of everything, before you take your exam, you will know as much as possible okay so now is a good time to become a member because i am adding lots um and and um, also for um, the mock exams i typically add two new ones a week you have tons of them in there now but i am adding even more so now is a good time um i'll post the links on the bottom of the video if you're not sure and if you guys have any questions as always just let me know